Hello everyone and welcome to another Tecla Power Fab Tips and Tricks video. My name is Dan Lopez and I'm the Technical Manager for MIS at Trimble. In today's video, I would like to address a functionality that it is pretty much utilized to some extent by about every company that I know, but we have been adding a few extra options here and there in the last four or five software versions. So I just wanna make sure that everyone is aware of the possibilities that exist. And what I'm talking about is stations and routes. Now, in order to address routing, I think I have to speak about stations first in order to make sense of what I will show you in route. So uh, here you go. Uh, stations and routes are together under maintenance, production control, and then uh, stations and route setup. Now, here's a question that I used to get as a trainer all the time, and it is how many stations should I set up how, or how many stations are too much? And the answer is it, it just depends. You know, every company operates different, so there is no wrong or right straight answer for that question. Uh, but let me give you an example. Uh, a company that needs to cut in one building of their shop, for example, and then they do the fitting and the welding in a separate one. Uh, they may want to have an station to track when the parts for an assembly are being pushed to, to the fitting area. But, you know, in a shop where every, all the processes are performed under the same roof, that may seem unnecessary. So I guess the right answer for that question will be, you have to add only the number of stations that will add value to your operations, right? You have to create a balance between the input process, because there will be people that need to turn the feedback to the office of what they are performing from the shop floor and what it's actually required for the people to know uh, when it's happening, right? If, if you put 10 different processes, but some of those doesn't really mean too much for the people that it's finding what's the status of a piece, uh, that, that's a good question to ask yourself. Now, another thing about the stations is that I always recommend to start simple. So people on the shop floor have some time to get familiar with the simplicity of uh, you know, feeding the process through PowerFab Go or, or through any kind of system that you are doing it. If you are not going paperless from the beginning, uh, even one more reason to go simple, right? So uh, they have to pass that learning cur curve time and, and then you can decide if you wanna put more stations into it. And, and you can see that what I did here on the screen is like we usually deliver the database with the 10, 20, 30, uh, 40, 50. We, we, we do these 10 numbers increments just in case you want to come back and you know put a station in between, you don't have to modify all the other ones, right? And and that's just giving the the right order for the production status screen. So you you want to have this number as the typical process will happen. So uh, that gives you room to to put a lot of stations. So as you can see here, I have like cut, drill, uh, layout, fit up, welding, uh, quality control, paint. Uh, some rework station in here. I even have like an erection and repaint. We'll, we'll talk about this in a bit. And then some different area completely separated, right? Some some company street like their miscellaneous area is completely separated. So that's fine too. You you think about what do you want to measure? It doesn't have to be also just one set of stations of your process uh, to track the assemblies across. So uh, anyway, uh, now let's talk about the properties that we have in here, right? When you create a station, yeah, so I was saying the station number, it's important, right? And you cannot use the same number twice. Uh, the description, it's just whatever makes more sense for you to, to describe that area. Uh, like the typical uh, the typical shop will use cut, right? But some I see some shops use parts instead. Uh, so it, it just depends. Now, this is very important, right? The type, production or field, it will determine uh, where in the production status screen this station goes to. But also, you know, if this is a production station, uh, it means that once that's completed together with all the other production stations that are completed in the route, it will mark the production status as finished, not in progress, right? So you may want to you want to make sure that you don't put fill stations as production because otherwise your production status it will be marked as in progress until you finish your fill station. So it's important to create that separation. And you can see here, for example, that I have erection as a fill station, right? So, and, and again, that's not necessary, but for companies that are doing their own erection, uh, they can create the, the fill stations as well. Now, the other thing that it's important, and I'll not go into the, those details too much, right? But uh, the labor groups here, uh, you gotta make sure that you have all the labor groups and that you utilize in estimating divided between the stations that typically will be part of a route, right? You, you wanna make sure that that's complete. And that's really a, 
a deeper topic, more talking about production codes. Uh, I think I did a video in the past, but if not, I can create a future video to talk specifically about that. But that that's a very important thing uh, for the stations to know. Uh, so so once you have those stations, there's really not too much anything else to, to, to learn about the stations other than the layout here, right? And that's optional, okay? Uh, this is just trying to, uh, like some people like this, em emulating the layout of their shop just so they see when they create the routes, as you will see here, how their material is traveling across, uh, but don't. it doesn't really matter or affect your report of the process. This is just a way for you to visualize how the material will be traveled around in your shop. So uh, that this being said, let me go ahead and click on route maintenance. Now, the, uh, the very important thing to define here as a company is, uh, do you want to track at the assembly level, part level, or both? Uh, Tecla PowerFab by default goes with the most common option utilized across the industry, which is tracking at the assembly level. But just know that it's, it is possible to track every single part through certain stations, as we'll see uh, uh, as well, right? I mean, you can track parts in every station if you want, but I, I guess it makes more sense to track only in a few stations and then join with the assembly, as we'll see. So. Uh, now, uh, you can obviously, some of the options here on the screen that you can see filter out, like only only show my par routes or, or show all of them or, or don't show the par routes. Uh, when you create a new route, uh, the options is just basically naming that route, set a description that will make sense for that route uh, to be named. The TFS station, it's the taken from stock station, right? What that means is that when you are uh, cutting on a material on a cut list, uh, with the process that is ha happening there, it's actually taken from the stock. But because for some routes or for some stations, that means it, you are also updating a process, that's the TFS station. What that process will be, what's the process that will be updating when cutting the material, right? And uh, obviously for more, most of my routes here will be cut and sell, right? But like those areas, this is used to clarify for those uh, companies that use the station, the first station as parts, for example, they may want to do uh, parts of their TFS station, right? Or they may, uh, they may just want to have that separated from uh, parts detailing or, or something like that. It's just some some comments in there. It's just to clarify that the primary process happening on a cut list, it's actually taken from the stock. And this is just a secondary option to define what a station do you want to update based on that. Uh, and then the the dashboard productivity station. I'll I'll select one of these routes just to show you. Uh, something in here. Uh, it, we have, as you know, a production, a shipping, and a field productivity dashboard. Uh, this is just basically asking you which stations do you want me to contemplate as the finished one for dashboard, dashboard purposes, right? And and that's mainly because, as you can see here on field, I can have some other more stations, but some of those other stations, like rework, for example, in fabrication, that's not always a station that I use, right? Un unless that I have some changes and I have to return that material or something like that, but then I can go and, and reassign a different route and it will go through that. So uh, you define what station do you wanna contemplate for this to be adding numbers for the material finish into your dashboards. And as you can see here, I have like in fabrication, whatever is the last station, I will say that's the most common option to, to choose. But for some shops, like for, ex for example, I have seen shops where they're, they're painting, it's it's like a subcontracted uh, process, but it's still happening inside of their location. They may, they may not wanna use that paint station as their last one, right? So they can go and say, oh, you know, after it's quality control, it's finished for me and I can contemplate that as fabricated. So uh, it's just an, an, an option in there as well. Uh, now the other option here is the route type. And that's something that will define what is this being used for obviously, right? But as you can see, the options here are assembly, part and assembly and part. Uh, now the difference, the main difference is when you say that a, a route is for a part, uh, it will ask you if you wanna join with an assembly for after a certain station or for certain station or from the beginning or after TFS, is this an option that you can use in there, right? And, and, and basically the join with assembly, it's talking about the, the weight, right? If you have an assembly that has a thousand pounds on it, and the main member, it's 900 pounds, and then all the other parts are 100 pounds altogether, 
Uh, what this will do is basically separate those through the cutting process, for example. But then when you go to layout and, and weld and all of that, you'll come back to only be able to track the main mark as a whole and it will be representing the weight of a thousand pounds entirely, right? So uh, just a couple of options there to, to uh, allow for flexibility. So uh, that's a very important thing to, to define in the process. Now, once you have your routes, uh, obviously all of you know uh, about applying those routes, right? And it can be applied in, in a mark by mark as basic situation, but they can also be applied from the global edit. And, and that's also something to think about when you create your routes, right? If you want to go very deeper into the point of using some of the CNC data information, if that's what you need, or if you really only need to know it, like if, if it's Finnish or or galvanized or or if it's a pain or on pain, uh, some of those situations can be also taken care. As I mentioned before, the, the default is tracking at the assembly level. So also remember if you are assigning a, a route to, uh, to single pieces, that you have to enable the piece tracking. So something, uh, how do how will do like look like? Like if I go here and assign to the B17 uh, the route as you can see here, like pain, and then save that, and check the production status for that assembly. You will see that it's basically tracking only the main mark and in, in the assembly as a whole, right? But if I go and for example say, all right, but one B18 and one B20, I want to track my parts, and then. Uh, after a certain station, I will track the uh, the assembly. Uh, I can do that, right? And I can, let me just do that example real quick before I finish here. If I go and say, I want to work quick with my main mark, I say 1B18 and 1B20. Okay. I can go and say, I will first assign all my accessory pieces routes. Uh, and you can have some pre-filters. As you can see here, I have like, painted assemblies, parts, single part. You, you can create some of that to make it easier uh, on you as well. So if I have this, I'll, I'll go ahead and assign this, assign the piece tracking option, and then assign my parts and single uh, um, assemblies routes uh, and update that. And I'll, I'll, I'm gonna assign that only to those marks for now. And then I'll go ahead and do the same uh, for the main marks of those two assemblies, right? So if I go in and again, just simply uh, filter out everything and include those two. This time I'm gonna be only doing it for the main uh, pieces. And the main pieces will have the normal route, which will be like my painting route. Right? So if I go and do that, I can take a look to the 1B18 and 1B20. Now, if I show the production status, uh, let me actually include the 1B17 too. So we can see the two examples that we did. I'm oh, sorry, B, 1B20, that's the that's mark that we were talking about. There we go, right? So you can see how we are tracking every single part uh, of those through the first station, but then they will join to the main mark to be tracked as an assembly for the rest of the stuff in, in fabrication and also in direction status. So uh, I, I think it's fairly simple, but it's, it's something that companies have to understand and rethink in how they want to track uh, for, you know, to evaluate how what really adds value to their companies. Uh, hopefully this is something that it's helpful. I wanted to do something more basic this time, uh, something that goes to, uh, to some of the more important process and let me know if you need any help. Uh, you, as always, you have your help desk area valuables and thank you for watching.